All right. Ah, yes. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. The, um, the link I posted is the one I emailed. If, you know, if you don't want to go digging your email, you can just get the link right there. Hi, everybody. Hello. Yeah, so started recording, so you can go ahead and say hello in the in the chat just to uh, as a as a sign in, all right. And I will post the link to the um, to the handout in there too. So welcome, thank you for joining us here on a Friday afternoon. So that's a uh, that's commitment right there. So thank you, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it, and I hope uh, hope it'll be a good Friday afternoon for you. All right. So the uh, the title here of our PD is planning instruction for continued distance learning, under the assumption that this is about to uh, this is going to continue. And um, I thought of gathering some ideas from uh, fall and trying to gather them. And, and that's, that's what we're going to look at, some things that uh, both uh, in, in theory and in, in research and anecdotally uh, worked, all right? So um, before we get started learning here, I uh, wanted to uh, just kind of lay out the objective for the day. So um, from the learner perspective, today I will explore routines, examples, and templates that, that worked. Um, I'm uh, drawing a lot of this largely from uh, this book, one chapter out of this book, Distance Learning Playbook, uh, by uh, Fisher, Frey, and Hattie. So some big names in education these days, right? And they wrote this book, uh, uh, you know, trying to capitalize, I guess, on on the moment and uh, showing some some research. Um, so this framework is based on that, and I'm also drawing from observations that I've that I've done in our districts and PDs that I've attended and, and, and led, um, conversations and lesson planning that I've done with colleagues in our district and outside of our district, and kind of pulled them together. Um, and and here it is. The reason for this is so that I can design learning experiences that impact students' understanding or student learning, right? Um, and I, I just wanted to say, you've, you've all done this already, right? You've, you've all been there. Uh, something I've heard a lot, um, and you've probably experienced it and probably have heard it a lot, is um, you know, uh, experienced teachers saying, I feel like a first year teacher again, right? But you know what? You're not. <laughs> um, you know, so I invite you to draw on your own experiences of impacting uh, student learning, and hopefully, um, this will help. You know, that will help you combine um, what what you get from this PD. Um, so we'll throw that in a pot, and what comes out is uh, uh, some some great lessons for you. Okay, <laughs> then some of you are first year teachers. Are welcome. All right. So if you can get through this, you can get through anything, right? Um, and then our success criteria here is um, leave here with a full plate, right? And so what I mean by that is, is think of this as um, a, a, a buffet, right? So when you when you go to a buffet, um, you know you 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 have lots of options, right? Um, you probably don't eat everything at the buffet. You probably shouldn't eat everything at the buffet, right? But if you can leave the table with a full plate, then great. You know, maybe you don't take everything. You know, if something doesn't work for you or, and for your students, you know, just leave it. Maybe you'll pick up something else. So I hope that that's what uh, you, you get out of this today. Um, so hopefully we'll leave here with a full plate. Yeah, yeah, what's a buffet, Gail just said. Yeah, so one day we'll get to a real buffet again, right? This, there's something in my subconscious, you know, just wanting like to pig out on food sneeze guard or something. So success criteria is leaving here with a full plate and I hope uh hope we get to do that. So let's before we, we get started, let's draw on your own experience and your your expertise. So this will be a primer for what we're gonna go over. Okay. So in your handout. 
uh, you should have a, a space that looks like this that says drawing on my ex expertise, right? So I want you to consider these four questions, all right? So how do I provide students uh, input and information? So this is pre-COVID or even during uh, uh, distance learning. Uh, try to answer those questions um, to yourself. Um, if you have the paper, either write it down or type it, right, in the, um, uh, in, a, in a separate tab, here's the, uh, the link one more time there. Uh, so I'm going to play a song for about two minutes and take those two minutes to answer those questions and then we'll get started, okay? All right. Okay, so hopefully uh, what you've jotted down some ideas. So how have you already provided input for in, um, uh, for, uh, and information to students, how you've structured collaborative tasks, how you've guided students thinking, etc. And um, I wanted to do that to kind of highlight the, our, our purpose here, right? And our purpose today um, is, is our objective for you to leave with a full plate of things that you can use to help students, uh, um, uh, to, to help them learn essentially, right? And so the, the book that I was referencing, uh, that I will be referencing uh, for today, um, has this, uh, this pinwheel illustration that sort of um, uh, illustrates how to approach distance learning, right? And, and so is uh, think of the purpose of, of whatever the instruction is, and then uh, these four little um, uh, spinny wheels, right? The, the, the blades are four different ways to um, get that information. So by demonstrating, collaborating, practicing, and then facilitating and coaching. And so try to categorize everything into those four. We're going to spend the majority of our time in uh, with demonstrating and collaborating. And then I'll try to give you a few things for, for the other two also. For, for each thing, I try, I'm tried to uh, give you a, a template, like a ready to go template that you could take and, you know, if you want, just go and use it on Monday or, you know, adjust it for your own needs and, and use it on Monday. So hopefully that will, that will work for you. Okay. All right. So first thing, first up is demonstrating. And so if we're going to a definition for this, it's providing students with a, um, examples of what they're going to do or learn. Um, it's a glimpse into the mind of another, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the, into the glimpse of, uh, into the mind of the teacher, right? It could be um, having students demonstrate for us their, their learning, right? And so with those things, in, let's uh, take a look at a few of their suggestions. All right. so, um, so here's uh, one uh, strategy that, that works really well for uh, uh, a number of teachers that I, that I, that I work with. And uh, so the, the strategy is, um, you can call it a, a think along, a think aloud, or a teach back, right? And so this is kind of a combination of, of most of these things. So all of you have probably created a study guide for your students at, at some point, right? And what a study guide is, is a, a list of things that are going to be on the test, right? So the um, this first strategy, this first uh, tool or idea is to take a classic uh, study guide and then assign it to students in a specific way. So if you notice the, the directions here, this was uh, uh, used for a, a fall 2020 uh, final exam. So in Google Classroom, you would post a study guide in a Google Doc, make a copy for every student um, so that you can assign it and then watch them work on it in real time, right? And so what you would do is tell them, okay, here's a list of terms. Tell me everything you know you, you think you should know about these terms. And um, uh, it, you know, and give them about 20 minutes, right? And, and then you can watch them fill it in. So let me, let me uh, click on this and show you, um, you know, how, how this, this one works and the, and the cool little distance learning twist that um, we, can, we can give it, right? And so um, on the second page is uh, just a um, study guide for a test on Julius Caesar that I had assigned pre-COVID, right? So I wanted, you know, here are my, the important terms, a definition and an example. 
Um, so now for our purpose, here's, here's the updated version, right? So in part one, I want the students to tell me everything they know about these terms. And I, you know, so they have 20 minutes to start typing in. Because I've assigned it through Google Classroom, I can watch them um, do it in real time. So for example, let's say this, this term hamartia or hamartia, um, it, it, students find a, um, you know, a definition online for, for this word, and it's, it's actually a medical term, right? And so they're starting to write the, the, the medical definition of hamartia or hamartia. Um, I can stop and tell them, oh, no, 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 I, it, we're looking at the literary definition of this, which is, you know, um, uh, an error in judgment. And, and so anyway, um, so you can spend those 20 minutes watching students uh, fill this out and, you know, give them feedback and see where any gaps might exist, right? The, the cool uh, twist to this is the part two of this. So after the 20 minutes, right, then uh, what these teachers did is they assigned uh, a, a, um, a Flipgrid assignment. And so for the Flipgrid assignment, um, I told students to choose what they think are the most important terms from that study guide um, for, from each category. Or you might say something like, what do you think are the top five most important terms in here? Tell me everything you think I want you to know about those five uh, terms in a 45 second flip grid, right? So 45 seconds isn't a very long time, right? But that's, that's part of the, the, the reasoning for it. So, so it's, uh, it's a two-edged, so, or there's lots of good reasons for this. So, so one, uh, because they uh, only have 45 seconds to do this recording, it's very likely that they can't do it in one take. They're gonna have to keep repeating to try to fit all the information into one thing, right? Um, they also have to cut out a lot of information, right? Um, include and not include certain things. So that's higher order thinking, right? Uh, determining, evaluating what is important, what is not so important, right? Um, and it's, it's a lot easier to grade than a really long uh, video or, you know, a, a big piece of writing, right? So if you have 200 students even, um, uh, 245 second flip grids uh, might go a little faster than 200 essays, right? So, so that's one um, uh, example using this uh, teach back uh, strategy, all right? So that's one. Let's look at another version of this. So this is a culminating uh, assignment. This was used for a final. You could use this at the end of, of a unit, right? But what about just like a day-to-day -day thing? Oh, and by the way, um, part of the directions on this was open book, open um, notes, open internet, right? Again, you know, that's okay, I think, because you're forcing the students then to discriminate, to evaluate what's important, what's less important, right? All right, so what about in a, in a smaller, like, like at the end of today, right? So after today's lesson, I want you to sum up some, some of the information. Well, um, there's this idea called the, the teach back translations. So I, I got this from a, 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 a different training I've seen and I've used it ever since, but, uh, you know, have students reteach the content so that a younger student would be able to understand. So you can use a prompt like the one on the screen there, like dumb it down so that five-year-old Mr. Rivas can understand. And then just add like a picture of you when you were a kid. Yeah, and a little bit of self-deprecation goes a long way, you know, with, with students I'm sure you've, you've seen, right? And so, yes, that is a picture of me and yes, I still fit into those shorts, right? Um, so uh, here, here's an, well, Here's an example of what it would look like in a, in a, in a lesson, right? So here's a, a Google slide um, with, you know, I, maybe I'm delivering this, this lecture or I'm having students watch this video that's in that slide and having them take notes in the red section. Again, this is like one of these uh, um, guided note things. It, later on, we'll, we'll go over what I call poor man's Nearpod, which is what, what this is. So you make a copy for every student, and as you're 
delivering the information, you have students record in the, on their own copy, a lot like I did with uh, your um, the handout for this uh, PD, right? And so they're receiving the information and they're recording it here in the red. And then to um, go over the information again at the end of class, I, I'll say, okay, now dumb it down for little Mr. Reeves. How would you explain uh, three facts about tragic heroes from this video to a child, a five-year-old child, right? All right. Um, all right. So um, one of the co-authors of the uh, distance learning playbook, uh, Hattie, wrote this other book. And uh, it's Visible Learning for Teachers. And so he rated all these things. He spent years doing this research on um, things that uh, are in strategies that show um, uh, uh, student learning, right, that you could visibly see and, you know, recreate and things like that. And um, so to my surprise, one of the things that rated pretty high on that was uh, lectures. And I was like, what? Guided or direct instruction? Really? Uh, yes, but when it's done it interactively, right? And so guided notes, like for this uh, PD, you have a place where you can jot things down. Um, or, you know, where you're directed to write something um, or interact with the content um, or um, Nearpod or actually this uh, next strategy, which is um, uh, I, I call I call it poor man's Nearpod. It's really guided notes, but I, I like this name better. So here's a, a welcome to class slide. And all it is is a, uh, a Google slide that's made to look like my uh, you know, like you're you're whiteboarding your classroom, right? You know, I know some people take uh, painter's tape and divide up things in, on their on the whiteboard and then add information, and that's what this is. And so, um, everything that a student might ask at the beginning of class, like, uh, "What are we going to do today? What what things do I need?" You know, things like that um, are included here. And so, if you go through, there's the date. Um, you know, what you're going to do today, the agenda, what materials you're going to need. Um, um, a, a, the way I like to write my objectives is, is down there too. So what we're going to do and what the like, success criteria will be. Um, in the center, in the red box, so red box always means there's something expected of you, right? And so um, <clears throat> there will be a prompt at the top and then um, in a, a space in the center for the students to write down what they need. And so as class comes in, I can start this five minute timer that's embedded in the slide and then students can um, um, get started on the uh, uh, on the warm up or whatever it is I want them to, to do while we're while we're starting and then a uh, friendly quotes or something silly in the, in, in the corner. Right. All right. And so if that's the first slide, then the content delivery could be in something like this, like that slide I, I just shown you, or as simple as you add the content in the um, black boxes, and then in the red, there's a space for the students to go and uh, reply. All right. Um, so that's uh, what I like to call poor man's Nearpod, because it essentially does what Nearpod does without having to s go into Nearpod. Speaking of Nearpod, that's been, from my own observations, the most engaged students have often been using something like Nearpod or Pear Deck, which is a similar uh, application. Um, and so that's, that's there, that's available to you. So, um, and I, I didn't include a tutorial. I think in the notes there's tutorials on how to get started on both of those, but uh, um, I figured I we wouldn't spend time in, in the PD doing that. There's lots of pre-recorded PDs in Ed Central on, on both of those, um, as well as uh, Edpuzzle, right? And uh, if you're not familiar with Edpuzzle, it, it takes a YouTube video and you can edit and uh, in, uh, embed questions into the, uh, into the YouTube video, right? Uh, one of the cool things about um, uh, uh, this this other feature. So, um, Learn three hundred and sixty is available to us, um, and uh, let, let me it has a, a new feature. And this email went out uh, late December, I think, where you can essentially 
use Edpuzzle inside of Learn360. So let, let me show you what it is and then why, what's the difference between that and, and Edpuzzle, right? So um, to find Learn360, um, you would go into uh, PowerSchool as if you're gonna take attendance. Uh, on the left-hand column, there is a um, you know a bunch of links. One of them is teacher and student resources. So that's where you go to find your textbooks, right? And in uh, among those is Learn 360, right? And so you can click on that and open it and log in with Google. And one of the cool features of this, as opposed to using Edpuzzle or, or, or YouTube, is that it's it's curated. So um, you could find full episodes, let's say, of uh, like Nova or you know documentary things, or if they're uh, for the English teachers in here, uh, full productions of Shakespeare's plays divided up by acts and scenes, um, all in in one thing that can be sent out through Google Classroom. So you could just assign a specific scene for the students to watch, which I think is really cool, um, or specific episodes. The, the cool thing, though, could be, you know, because you're like, I can find that on YouTube. I can find some bootleg version on YouTube easy. Well, these aren't bootlegs, so they're, a lot of them are you know, high quality um, resolution and you know, that, that sort of thing, or, or you don't have the weird ads in there. So, so that's one of the benefits uh, of that. So, there's a little bit more than you might find on YouTube, or at least a little bit more uh, quality things, right? But um, there's this new feature up there, um, the quiz feature. So you can click on that, and um, you essentially can do everything you do in Edpuzzle. So um, create a multiple choice question for students, um, uh, or open-ended questions, and they can't continue through the video until they get that question right, if, if you choose. Um, and you get some some data like that too, like how long they spent on sp specific questions and, and, and things like that. So so that's available. And then as an added bonus, you can directly um, shoot it out to uh, Google Classroom. So so that's there and that's that's available. So that's one one way to um, do direct instruction that according to the research uh, works is um, direct that interactive all right cool um and uh just gonna remind everybody too if you haven't muted your mic uh that can cause some some feedback so if you haven't muted your mic make sure you you do please thanks um one more uh cool new feature that's available to us uh it's a paid feature that has been paid for so we have this if you if you haven't heard of it yet but it's called quizbot so it's a Google Chrome extension. So you would add it to your Google Chrome just like um, you, you would other extensions. So you go to the Google Chrome web store and add it. And it, it, here's one. ones. It's, um, so it, it'll look like that. And if you click on it, so you go to any website, anything on the internet, you can go to anything on the internet and then click on the little button that looks like that and you get this little drop down menu and you can instantly create a quiz from anything on the internet so quizbot reads the text that's on that so you could go to like the new york times or uh news newsella or you know a, a a pdf even that's that's on online and quizbot reads it and develops uh, multiple choice questions for you uh, based on the, the content that's there. And they, and they make pretty good sense. They're, they're just, uh, so it's smart enough to know, to, to be able to read English well, I guess, and make a quiz for you. And the quiz is made through Google Forms, right? And so uh, once you make it, it's automatically saved in your Google Drive in a folder that's automatically um, uh, created and so the quiz bot uh, folder right so one more way to give some direct instruction so if you're teaching asynchronously you know have students go and read this article or this piece of text um, something in the textbook I've used it on on springboard and it and it worked pretty well so anything online will will work with this and um, uh, 
um, then you can assign a quick comprehension uh, quiz to, to students that way. All right. All right. So uh, a lot to 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 process so far. So that's that's uh, demonstrating in, in a nutshell. So what I'd like you to do, <clears throat> I'm actually I'm going to put you into um, into groups. Right. Uh, hopefully pairs. There might be one or two people who uh, will be in a um, maybe a group of three. Let me make sure we can do that. Okay. All right. And so in your in your breakout room, when you get put into that breakout room, um, I want you to consider this question: How can I use teachbacks in my classes, or any of the things that I've that, that we've covered? Uh, so far, is there a way that you can use it? And so when you get into your your group. Uh, Gloria Meza asked, uh, does it work with digital textbooks? I've only tried it with the English digital textbook. So I'm assuming if it works with that one, it will work with, with others. So from what I've seen, yes, it, it does work. It works with a Google Doc even. So um, great question. Um, the uh, So a three-minute pair share. So I'll set a timer for three minutes. Um, when you get into your group, uh, the person with the longest hair, I'll have you share first, all right? Um, and you'll share for a minute and a half, all right? And then after that minute and a half, so you you keep track of the, of the time, uh, then the other person will share for the remaining time. If there's three people in your group, then, um, you know, just uh, decide amongst yourselves how you're going to do that. So three minutes in groups, they should be opening right now, all right? And if, if some of you are on a phone and can't get on, then if you're remaining in here, just go ahead and, and share in, in the main room.
All right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Numbers coming up. We'll wait a second here. All right, just catching up on the chat there while, while you were in the uh, breakout room. So thank you for uh, chatting it up. I'm sorry I missed some of those during, in, in real time. So, all right. Um, would QuizBot work in world languages? Great question. Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head, um, but I, I don't know. One of their sister products is a translator. So I, I I imagine it might actually, um, but I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sorry. You'll, you'll have to let me know if you try it and um, just email me and, and let me know. I'd be interested in finding that out. All right. All right. So that is, uh, that's it for demonstrating. So now we're going to move on with collaboration, right? And so collaborating and uh, um, you get students to talk productively can, can be tough. Um, at, at all ages, I, you know, there were too many of you to, for me to jump into your, uh, um, uh, breakout rooms today, but I don't know if any of you ex had that experience or it was just this awkward silence bet between the two of you, or if you've tried doing the, um, breakout rooms and s with students and there are some kids who are just like, yeah, yeah, let's talk. And then there are a few who are just like awkwardly quiet and, you know, and then there are some who are happy to type, you know, in the chat, but not speak and, you know, so, um, but a, a lot of times you get the little, you know, the dreaded uh, chirp, chirp when you walk into the uh, the breakout room. So here are a few tips um, that uh, sort of a, a combination of some of these tips that I've, I've seen uh, work. Um, none of these are... Um, silver bullets, you know, like the answer, the one, the chosen one or anything like that. But uh, maybe, maybe they'll help, right? So here's um, uh, these uh, four tips that uh, kind of gathered. So, so the first one is assigning specific roles. And I think that's important even in, in person um, group instruction, right? When you, when you have students go into uh, uh, groups even physically, it's a great idea to have like, you know, if, if you have four students have four roles, four jobs, something for each student to, to do in that group. Uh, it's even more important in a distance learning setting, right? Um, the other one uh, that, that I've seen be very helpful is uh, something sort of like color coding the roles and, and the jobs. And I'll give you a few examples on, on how to do that coming up. Um, and then uh, this is a nice little trick I've, I've, I've seen done is uh, giving the shared link. So if let's say that uh, me, Lisa and Carolyn are in one uh, breakout room, right? Um, the teacher will give Carolyn the um, uh, editing rights to the document where we're supposed to write our, um, our, our answers and only to Carolyn. That way, uh, I and Lisa both have to talk and tell her what to say, right? Um, you know, uh, most of the time you can just tell the students like, um, you know, only Carolyn can write in there. So Lisa, don't ask for editing rights, just, you know, have Carolyn uh, do it and you talk or whatever. Um, you know, you can threaten them with, uh, hey, you know what, I can do the revision history on that Google Doc and I can see who added what. Right, you know, um, uh, four out of five times probably you don't even need to say that. You can just say, okay, only Carolyn will be 
the the scribe for today. If you have a bigger group of six, maybe you have two people with editing rights, so two scribes, and next time you, you, know, you keep the same group and then those jobs rotate so that someone else has the, um, the needs to be the recorder. Right? And so I've, I've seen that uh, work to, to uh, you know, varying degrees of success. Like, you know, you know you, it's, it's been pretty good. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, the related to that is have, if you're writing, have another student be the one who talks to you to record, right? All right, so, so there's some, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, um, cool tips there. Um, and Hattie's book where, you know, he did the research on, on looking at um, effective strategies for student learning. One of the highest was uh, Jigsaw, right? Um, and, and again, Jigsaw when, when done right. And so um, if you're familiar with this um, strategy, um, it, it sort of le really lends itself to a distance learning uh, setting, right? So what this is, is you, you place students into uh, into groups first, right? And so here's uh, where color coding could, could help. So let's say you have groups of six and you have um, five groups of, of six. You can tell students, you know, which uh, group they're going to be in and eat, and then divide up the content between the six, right? So, um, you know, divided six ways in some way. Uh, after they've divided the content or you've divided it for them, then uh, you have them break out into another uh, group, into an expert group. So you notice all the reds are together, all the oranges, all the grays, et cetera, right? And the students in that group are responsible for making sure that everyone in that group uh, understands the content. So you, they quiz each other, they, you know, um, um, you know, ask each other um, questions. You can do some of these other um, uh, strategies that I'm, I'm going to go over. You can incorporate those to make sure that those students know that content in the expert group. And then you have the students go back to the home group and reteach that material to their group. And when you do it like, like this, then uh, according to Hattie's research, this is one of the highest yielding strategies for students um, uh, learning, right? And, and, I, and I get, um, you know, th th this can be very time consuming. This might take longer in a distance learning setting than uh, in an in-person setting, arguably, right? Um, but um, if the research is correct, it's one of the most high high yielding uh, strategies you can use here. All right. Um, so yeah, and then uh, one of the questions in the chat uh, had to do with uh, putting students into groups. And so um, what I would recommend is uh, not necessarily using the groups like, like we just did, because that was random, um, but uh, creating um, uh, Google Meets as breakout rooms for students. And uh, I can provide a, a tutorial on how to do that. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll add it to the next slide. It's not in here, but that's a, uh, that was good. So I'll, um, after we're done with this, I'll, you know, and, and you have access to this uh, uh, slideshow, the slide after this will be a video tutorial on how to create multiple rooms. So you could assign specific students to specific rooms. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so so color coding. Here's here's a, an example. So if you have a um, <clears throat> uh, a way of uh, uh, you know dividing up the work for a specific job for students, um, here's here's one illustration, right? So if you want to follow Tommy on this, right? Day one, Tommy will be doing the red job, and then on day two, Tommy is going to be doing the purple job, then blue, etc. Right? Um, and so there, there's a rotation in an expected order. So if you give students just an illustration like this, um, that, that'll help them understand. And they also know that, you know, today I'm going to be doing this job, but tomorrow I'm going to be doing this other job. So that if one of the jobs the students are just not really comfortable with, 
um, then um, they can move on to, to another one. Like, you know, when we're in person and we have the students maybe draw a picture to, to process some information, you might have a student who hates drawing, right? Well, this way they know that, you know, if you're the illustrator today, you won't have to be the illustrator tomorrow. Or you have the Picassos who are like, that's the, the thing, they, the only thing they ever want to do, right? Well, now, you know, you're breaking them, um, helping them break out of their uh, comfort zone a, a little bit. Right. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry, Judy. No, nothing wrong with Picasso's. I was one of those. I always wanted to do the, uh, the, the drawing. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, so here's uh, one way to do this color coded uh, rotation thing. All right. Um, and so this is like an, an old strategy, though it's new to me. I, I just discovered this one, but it's called reciprocal teaching and essentially you divide students up into groups and each of those students um, has a specific uh, comprehension job a, a specific comprehension strategy and so you'll have a template and a, uh, a nice little rubric that you can use here so let me just show you really quick what the template looks like and so each <clears throat> job again is color-coded right and so um, what you would do is you would assign this to, to a group or give them the link like I did with the document here today where they are forced to make a copy or assign it through Google Classroom to, for students to have editing, you know, however you want to uh, distribute this. Um, and then students are given um, some, some prompts. So based on the reading, based on the content, maybe it's a video they have to watch, whatever the case might be, they predict, right? And then here are some sentence stems. Uh, that will help them write the content in the white space down here, right? So for the yellow job, there's uh, ask, that one's asking teacher, teacher-ish questions, right? So here are some stems, and you have the students um, fill in the blanks for the questions down here in the white, right? And you can decide how much of the content you want them to to, to use. Uh, one of the the cool um, things that you can do with, uh, you know, doing this in a, in a distance learning setting, I think, is rather than just having someone be the illustrator, right, you can have them be the, the, the meme or GIF generator, right? Um, and, you know, I'm, there's something about that, that there's a wit that goes into um, creating memes and, and GIFs, and wit, anything that involves wit is, uh, you know, it, involves higher order thinking because you're you're criticizing something and so I, I I really appreciate that I think it's it's great it's it's more than just summary it's summary with with a criticism like sometimes it's meant to hurt right and so you know I, I love that so all right so that is a uh, reciprocal teaching right so this strategy that has been around since the 80s apparently um, and then there's this other one very similar to this called uh, text rendering. All right. Um, so let me just show you what this looks like. And it's, it's again, very similar. Um, the idea is that students read a, a, a piece, whether it's an article, something out of the textbook, some kind of information or a story, right? And a specific number of students, this one's set up for three students. So three students choose a sentence that was especially significant for some reason, and they have to put the sentence there and explain why. Um, the blue students will write a phrase that moved them or provoked, you know, uh, um, provoked some, some thought or is engaging. And then finally, the, the last group chooses a word and, and records it there. <clears throat> All right, cool. So, so there's that one. All right. Um, and then another similar one to that. Um, this is one of my favorites. Actually, they're getting higher in my favorite. Uh, uh, we're leading up to my fa ultimate favorite one. But so, so this one is, is even better. I really like this one. It's, uh, again, an oldie. So something I, from a workshop I attended in 2008. Um, and uh, so this uh, uh, guy basically was saying, have students ask the questions. So don't just have you ask the questions to them to see if they understand have them do it. And I was, it just kind of blew my mind. I was like, why have I been working so hard? Let me need to let the students work hard, right? 
And so uh, here, here, let me show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you a sample. So here's the template. All right. Um, and so he divided up all questions into three categories, factual, inductive, and analytic. You can call them uh, other things. I don't know that those are the most accurate descriptions, but that's what he called them, uh, Mr. Burke there, and so I'll, I'll, I'll keep them there. So factual questions are things that you can point to the text. So you, can, you should be able to find the answer and point to it, right? Uh, I'm sorry, ask the question and point right to the answer. So a comprehension uh, type of question. An inductive question is uh, a little bit more. You, you, you could ask the question and then find the answer multiple places and put it together, maybe even synthesize the answer. Um, analytic questions uh, take whatever it is, whatever the content is, and you connect it to something outside of the content. So if it's a story, you would try to find a connection to that story from real life, from a TV show, another book you've read. If this is a math problem, you would try to find a connection to that math problem in, in real life or real life application of that, right? Um, so that's, that's what that is. Um, it's eerily similar to, um, uh, Costa's levels, right? That little house diagram with the questions. It's, you know, they, I don't know who ripped it off from who, but it's very similar to that. So, so there's that. Here's a, a quick example of that, of the strategy using uh, the first uh, couple chapters of Pride and Prejudice, right? So you would show the students, uh, that you ask the question in bold and then answer it underneath in whatever style you want. So in this case, I, you know, we'd have the students uh, use textual support, uh, you know, using embedded quotations and correct citations and things like that. Uh, but maybe you don't need all, you know, all of that. You just want them to ask and answer the question. the The other great thing about this is that because they're coming up with the questions, it's not it's not something that's um, uh, Googleable, right? Um, it, it might be, but it's going to take a lot more effort to to Google the you know an, an answer to a question you came up with, you know. So um, that's one reason I really love this one. So there's that, and and again you have uh, the template uh, that you can make your own copy of, a sample that you could show the students if you if you want, make adjustments to it if you want, and a detailed set of directions, right? And so. Um, more than just this little snippet that, that we're um, we're going through right now, all right. Um, this was all, my all-time favorite strategy for for reading with students, um, and uh, um, it's been around for a while. So here's a, a detailed uh, uh, tutorial on how to do that um, right here. Uh, but let, let me just show you the template and sort of show you why. Um, I like this so much. And again, this is a uh, very English centered because that's what I taught. So this is what I, I had examples of. Um, but it can be applied to other uh, content areas pretty pretty easily, I think. So um, <clears throat> the idea is that you have five jobs for students, right? Um, these are very English centered, but you can make these jobs something completely different, right? So. Um, the the first job that I have here is the red job, which is the character control job. So they keep track of the characters and write down what we learn about them. Uh, then there's the illustrator or the person, you know, the, or, or memer in this case, right? So they create a meme or a GIF to capture the spirit of what they just read. Um, the connector, which um, connects this, uh, whatever they just read, whatever content they just looked at, um, they connect that to something outside of that immediate text. So, um, you know, in, in the example that I give you here, it's about uh, it's uh, chapter one of Pride and Prejudice. So maybe they have siblings, and you know, or, or maybe they have a, a a nosy mother or something. And so they make that connection with themselves or with another character. Um, somebody keeping track of important words and then somebody uh, who's in charge of summarizing the content are, are the next two jobs. Here's what it looks like in, um, in practice. Here's a sample, All right? Um, and, and so again, I, I like to give students a structure and have them like follow that structure. So, um, you know, the name is in bold and then here's how you would write, you know, the, the information underneath it. Um, the meme job I think is, is great because like I said, it's higher 
order thinking and it you're forced to criticize almost if you create a meme so there's there's those and then um, um connector connects you know the the content to something else like maybe uh how how is um how are how is mr bennett like arthur weasley from the uh, uh harry potter books you know and make that connection and anyway so so there's there's all that all right um, and you have copies of that to explore and, and, and look at at your leisure, okay? All right, so that's uh, literature circles. Oh, and, and by the way, I called it modified because, it, you know, in its purest form, students choose their own book and they form reading circles around the book. And, you know, mine's more authoritarian where I'm like, no, no, I, I'm telling you what you're going to read and I'm giving you jobs, specific jobs. And then I'm telling you how to rotate between those jobs. And so, um, so that's why it's modified. All right. Okay. Uh, this next one is, uh, uh, it was created by a history teacher and uh, to to look at content specific vocabulary, right? And so what what she does is she gives these uh, um, a copy of this slide for each term to each student, and they fill this out. And it's, it's very similar to those jobs where you know you you, you um, write the word the definition, a GIF example, a meme example, and image example and then a historical modern and um, uh, a example a historical or modern example rather and a use it in a sentence and then give three connecting terms to that word and so you know so they go through that so each student does that then she puts them into groups and they compare their answers to choose the the best ones and then when they choose their best ones they go through this vocab throwdown right and so you have these two teams um, and they choose the best of the best and then they um, uh, fill out a thing like this and then the teacher projects it and it's all i don't know if you've played uh, jackbox games there's a uh, t-shirt uh designing game if you're familiar with that it's it's the exact same concept but with um, uh, with uh, history content or whatever content you're, you're teaching. And so she'll project this and then using the, the poll feature in, in Google Meet or in Zoom, students vote up or down each one. And whichever team ends up with the most amount of votes, they, they win a prize. So yeah, it's, I, 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 love, I love this one. So this one, um, this is a, a, a teacher named Amanda Sandoval uh, came up with this. Um, she, uh, I, I uh, emailed and asked her for permission on this and um, if I could use it. And she was like, yeah, but I stole it. And so here's who I stole it from. So I was like, oh, cool. Um, so I didn't ask this guy, but because uh, I figured it's okay. But this was the original one. Hers is a, a lot prettier, I think. So that's his original one. And that's the uh, example of the students doing the thing. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, talking for way too much here. So another um, three minute pair share. Um, I'll, I'll throw you in the same uh, groups, I think. I don't know, let's see, did, it, did I save it? Yeah, I think, I think it's still the same. So and set it up. I'm gonna throw you into some groups. You have three minutes to uh, discuss. This time, um, the person who goes first is the person whose birthday is closest to today. So whoever has the closest birthday to today, you go first, all right? And go.
All right. <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. So I, um, here's a link in the chat to a YouTube video explaining how to set up uh, breakout rooms externally, so not in your Google Meet, but you have these static um, um, uh, breakout rooms in Google Classroom that um, you know it might be helpful for you. Um, this is a great feature right now, especially for stuff like we, what we just did. Um, but for something more structured, um, it, it'd be nice to have that. So, so it's in the in the chat there, so you can click on it and just like leave it in a different uh, tab or or go watch it, I guess, if you want. But uh, I'll also put it in the um, in the presentation. Uh, you you have a link to the presentation actually. It's at the bottom of that uh, handout I, I gave you. So um, uh, before the references page, um, uh, Darcy, yes, the template for the lit circles is in the presentation. It's it should also be in the uh, in the handout. Um, cool. All right. All David. Right. Yes. David. Yes. Mr. I was. Uh, oh, Dr. I got yeah. kind of cut off when you were pointing down. You were talking about the link. Uh huh. Is it, where is it? It's at the bottom of what? Uh, the link to the presentation is at the bottom. Uh, it's on the last, second to last page of the uh, handouts of the handouts. Oh, okay. So it's in the handouts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> cool. Um, oh, yeah. I. I threw you into the uh, breakout rooms, but I didn't have you, uh, I didn't, I just realized I didn't ask you the question. I, I think you, maybe you figured it out or you just took the opportunity <laughs> to process a little bit. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> all right, moving on to practice. All right, so two more uh, things to go here and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll call it a day. So, um, uh, according to these researchers, they have this um, idea of, uh, you know, practice is one of the, um, the blades on their uh, spinny wheel of uh, perfect uh, lesson in, uh, planning and things like that. And so it's, it, there's a very simple principle behind practicing. And, it, you know, I think we, we all can uh, agree to this that uh, students need a lot of practice if they're going to learn something and then be able to apply it, right? Um, practice in and of itself is not necessarily good though, right? It has to be done right. So again, uh, just remind everybody to uh, put their mics on mute so that uh, everybody doesn't hear some feedback just in case. Um, but here's uh, two types of practice that are effective and they're um, sort of their, their antithesis as well. So um, what works is spaced practice. What doesn't work is mass practice, all right? And so uh, spaced practice would be um, rather than giving the content all at, all at once and having them practice it in mass, you uh, give little bits of it at, at a time. And so you practice a little bit here, then a little bit tomorrow, and then a little bit the next day. Um, and that is how practice uh, works for, um, for learning, right? The other uh, principle to this uh, that they uh, give is practice needs to be deliberate, right? Um, so deliberate practice works, mindless repetition does not work, right? And so we'll um, give you a, a, a couple of ideas on how to apply both of those. So here, here's an illustration, oh yeah, it, it, threw this in, um, I thought this was super interesting. So this um, study came out in, in March, right? And so <clears throat> what this organization did is they, they were thinking, okay, there's gonna be major learning loss in fall of 2020 when we go back to school, right? <laughs> Little did they know we'd still not be there, right? But, uh, um, and so what they did was that they, they were trying to look at equivalence and they thought, okay, um, uh, after Hurricane Katrina, there were, um, students who were misplaced and out of school for months. So learning loss occurred. What worked? 
So what worked with those students? Let's let's take a look at that. And here's uh here, here's what they came up with. And I highlighted the the things related to high school there. And so this idea of spiraling is something that that had um a high effect, right? And so they, in in very simple terms, and I'm just gonna I hope I'm not butchering this too bad, but um, spiraling essentially is you you introduce new information, and before you give another new bit of information, you go back and you revisit the old information and then you give a little bit new information, then you go back and review. And, you know, so, so that is one of the things that, that worked really well and had, you know, the data that they looked at was uh, uh, persistence in going back to school and graduation rates. So that had uh, a profound effect. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, the, the authors of this book came to that same conclusion um, they didn't cite the study, and so I'm, maybe they came up. I'm, I'm assuming they came up with it, you know, independently, and it like, you know, it, it works. So, um, so we're gonna go with that. So here's a, a traditional unit of study, right? Um, like on Monday, we might present three, uh, three um, concepts related to one unit of study. Uh, we finish it up on Tuesday, maybe assess students, and then move on to a new concept that might take a couple days and then um, assess students again before moving on to a new concept, right? Well, <clears throat> the, what, what both of these studies um, argue is that um, it's, it's better if we give information like this, where we give a little bit of it on Monday instead of all of it, right? And then on the next time we meet, we, we review some of it and then come back here. And so one example would be having students create their own multiple choice quiz based on the new information. So I gave new information on Monday, students processed it, they did an activity. All right, then on Tuesday, we uh, are gonna go over that information again, but we're gonna start by having students create a multiple choice quiz based on Monday's information. And now I'm gonna give them some more um, uh, new information still related to that circle. Then the next time we meet, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna revisit those quiz questions, write new quiz questions for what we covered yesterday and then I'm gonna give you some, a little bit more new information. And maybe uh, we're, we're, we're gonna go back to all, all of the quizzes and give an explanation to the correct answer for each of the quizzes, the, uh, for each of the, the questions and the, and the correct answers to those quizzes, quiz questions, right? And so on and, and so forth. So, so that's sort of a, a, a a cheap illustration of, 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 of that concept, right? Um, and then there's this other uh, idea of, you know, the spiraling thing, um, also heard it called interleaving, um, where you, you do that stuff with the, the stuff on Monday, but then you also introduce some other new bit of information and another new bit of information, perhaps. Maybe, maybe it's not three, maybe it's only two, but you, you split that up. And then the next time you meet, you review that information, but in a different order, and apparently that has that's a high yielding uh, way of presenting new information. And right? so, not giving it all at once, just giving little bits of it at a time and reviewing each time. So, with that concept in mind, here are some techniques. All right. Um, so, one that I I thought was was, you know, kind of blew my mind when, when I um, saw, saw this is having students creating quizzes, but um, these uh, self-assessing quizzes in Google Slides, not Google Forms, but Google Slides, right? And so let me, let me show you what it looks like, all right? And it, it can be a little complex to create, but don't worry, I created it for you. So you can just take that uh, template and, and use it for yourself, all right, and, and, and adjust it or even assign it to your students. So, <clears throat> so here's a, a, a sample quiz, all right, using Google Slides. So what I've done is I've, I, I'm presenting this slide. Um, I, I went to publish to the web, and so it's a publish to the web presentation, and uh, there's a tutorial on how to, how to make your slides do that, all right. 
And so what you do with this is you create a slide with a question and three options, right? And so this question in particular is asking what, uh, what two emotions should um, an audience experience for tragedy, right? So I, I know that the answer is B, it's fear and pity, but let's say I, I don't know. So I'm like, uh, maybe joy and anger because those are two cool characters in, in Up. Oh, no, that's wrong. It says, sorry, that's incorrect. And then there's a little explanation here and a video that will help me understand the answer to that question. And then here's a link to go back to the question, right? And so what I would have students do, I would have this template pre-made and then have students fill in the information. So have them come up with the question, have them come up with three options, maybe give them you know, like one option is silly, one is pretty close, and the other one is the right one, right? And then they have to come up with an explanation for why the wrong one is not, uh, why that isn't correct, right? And that would be here. Um, and if there's a video that it would explain the information, then they can find it and embed it here, right? And then you can go back to the right question after what, after, I'm sorry, you can go back to the question after watching the video and knowing the right answer, and you can click on the, the option that says the, the right answer, click on that and says, yes, that's correct. And all right. Um, and, and all this is, is one slide presentation. And these uh, uh, shapes link to different slides in that same presentation. So that's, that's all it is. So all you have to do is fill in the information in, in, the, in the template, and it creates this for you. Then students can, uh, you know, exchange their um, their uh, their quizzes with each other, create them themselves, and if you're lazy like me, you have a pre-made quiz already, right, for for the other period. So, all right, so that, that's how that one works. All right. Cool. And so I give you a sample and a template and a video tutorial on how to create it but I created one for you, so you can just use the one I created. But if you want to have your students create it, and they might come up with even cooler uh, graphics, then, you know, go for it. Just make sure you, you share it with me, you know, after you have them create a, a really cool one. Or if you create a really cool one, you know, share it with me, and we'll, we'll build this community, continue to build this community. Right? All right, so I, I told you two ideas, right, for uh, space practice. That's one. The other one is uh, having students create virtual flashcards. And uh, again, Hattie um, says that that is a really high yielding uh, activity for students to create flashcards and then do things with those flashcards. So it's not the act of creating the flashcards that's um, of value, it's what you do with the flashcards. All right, so it, it, with that in mind, um, one of my favorite completely free sites to create flashcards is, is right here, flippity.net, right? And so if I, if I go there, it takes you here. And um, what Flippity is, is some, some, some people who really like math created these things and they're free. And all, all these are, are, um, uh, spread-based templates that turn into websites. So you fill in the information in the spreadsheet and it automatically generates this web-based thing for you, right? And there's all kinds of things. So let me show you their flashcard feature. Um, I'm gonna show you the, their template first. So I'm gonna click there and then I'm prompted to make a copy of, of the template. So, so you go there and now I'm gonna make a copy of the template and it's waiting. All right, so here's, here's the template. So side one, so column A is side one of the flashcards. Uh, side two, or uh, I'm sorry, column B is side two or the back of the flashcards. And then you can type in what color you want it to be over here and the color of the text. Um, or you can just leave it at the, at the default. Okay, so whatever you type in there in the first column becomes the front of the card. Whatever you type in here becomes the back of the card and you can embed videos or images as well. All right, All right. so, so what you can do is assign this template to students, have them make, make, a, their own, um, make a copy for them to edit and they can put in their information. And then 
here's the cool part. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, this. Uh, so back to Flippity, and I'm going to show you their demo. So this is using the template spreadsheet. All right. So here's the front of the card. The capital of Malaysia is Ah, Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Okay. Um, the year uh, of Columbus's discovery of the New World, uh, what is that? Fourteen. That I would, you know. Oh, I could argue that, you know, whatever. But you know, there's that, and it's a different color, and so on and so forth. Okay, so, so fun way to uh, um, uh, to to interact with flashcards. And yes, you can you can use images. Let me see. Let me get to one. Uh, there, Monet. There, right. Um, <clears throat> and so, so. There's the flashcards, all right. In and of themselves, a great study tool. But wait, there's more. All right, so I can click here and it gives me a list of the information, right, uh, that I entered. So I could print that if I, if I wanted to, or the students can print that by clicking here and giving it to you so that you, know, you can hold them accountable to that. Here's a, a way to practice is by filling in the blanks. So they give you the front of the card, and you have to put in what goes in the back of the card, right? So, but wait, there's more. There's a matching game that you can uh, play, um, and it, it'll time you, and so you can try to beat your own time, you know, and you know, go back and match these guys. But wait, there's more, so much more. So if you click on this more button, this is like new, actually. Um, you can use your spreadsheet that you're in and create a bingo game, a crossword puzzle, uh, or, you know, like this, you know, uh, or yeah, crossword puzzles, what it's called, um, different manipulatives, which is basically like a, a, a two columns and you move to, to make pairs, um, a matching game. Quiz show is essentially Jeopardy. So it automatically creates a Jeopardy game based on your cards. What, right? Um, scavenger hunts and all these other things, a word scramble, or you could make a quiz, all right? Um, and it's free. Yeah, wow, right? Okay, so if um, all these researchers are saying that flashcards are a really high yielding um, and effective way to retain information, um, but that's con uh, th that only depends on on your use of them. Uh, this is this is super valuable. This is, so this is great. All right. Okay. So so that was uh, ideas for space practice, right? Um, and one more thing: the uh, just using flashcards totally lends itself to space practice, right? Because you can do your 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 flashcards put them aside for a minute, move on to something else, and then come back to them, mix up the cards, which you can mix up in, in, in Flippity also. So, so there's that. Um, uh, I rushed through that, uh, but there's a tutorial on how to create the, um, how to go to the spreadsheet and fill in the information right there for you. All right. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the one way to for to use practice well is uh, spaced practice. The second one is deliberate practice, right? And um, so to to quote these researchers, they said uh, practice is more effective when students know why they're doing it. Um, just like you know, we all write down or, or somehow record and give students the objective for the day. This is, you know, whatever you, you, you call it, the, you know, what we're going to do and why and how we're going to do it or the, um, you know, the, the success criteria for today, or, you know, whatever term you, you give it, that, that's what we do, right? Is we give students a goal for the day and then we, and then we, we do it, right? And hopefully um, we, we accomplish that goal. If not, we come back to it the next time and try to meet that goal, all right? Um, <clears throat> and so when students know that, uh, according to these researchers, um, they are more likely to, to learn the content, right? Um, one way um, to do that is having students create goals for themselves. Um, I'd shared this before at a, at a, uh, a PD earlier, I, th I think back in summer, 
But um, but uh, here here's a uh, a template for creating or helping students create smart goals, right? Um, and if you don't know what smart a smart goal is, it's a systematic method for designing a, a goal and being able to meet it. Uh, one way I've um, seen this done uh, when my son was in, I think it was sixth grade. The uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, the teacher had them create this um, a SMART goal. So, you know, um, first couple of weeks, she told them, you know, like how to think of, uh, um, all, all, you know, <clears throat> how how the goal can be uh, achievable and measurable and all those things, right? And and they came up with a goal. And then at back to school night, they had recorded this um, flip grid of their of their goal. And so all the parents went to their to the um, students' desks and opened up, you know, this. And there was this video of the student explaining what their smart goal was. And then the parents were supposed to leave them a, a like an encouraging message, so that when they're having difficulty create getting to that to that goal, there's this ready-made recording of a parent, you know, like rooting them on, and you know. And then the teacher had recorded one too. I mean, this was tear like like invoking stuff right and um and then i thought well that you know that'd be good right now i mean i think students are probably you know like they might realize that there is some sort of learning that have they might not have gotten that they could have in person or they're missing a, a, a lot i don't have them create a goal like what do you what do you want to accomplish this in you know in this virtual environments for for this quarter um and you know we have that uh, that uh, virtual back to school night. And I don't, I don't know what that's going to look like, and maybe you do. But uh, how great would it be to be able to give that to the parents and like, hey, look, your kids are, um, you know, we, we I help them create this goal and they present that goal. So um, in here, and I, I can click in it really quick, but uh, it, it's just a, um, a little template for developing a, a SMART goal. The, the red is, you know, where the students enter their uh, information, okay? So there's that on uh, deliberate practice. All right, um, let's take another uh, quick break here um, and, and discuss all of this. So the, the, the prompt for this is, how can I design practice experiences for my students? So what are some, uh, practice experiences based on your own expertise and you know these tools that I've shown you hopefully maybe there's you know one cool new one that, that you might see um, so I'm gonna throw you in pairs again and this time I'll, I'll have you share back when we when we get back maybe one or two okay so um, I'm gonna throw you into groups here breakout rooms set up rooms uh, and I will open rooms now and you decide who goes first this time. Three minutes. Mama. Hey, Eric. Hey. Hey, Mama. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Eric. Hello. Hello. So I got Eric. I don't know where he went. Oh, oh, it, there's uh, nobody in your uh, in your group. No. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Let me no. see if I can throw you somewhere else. Uh, let me edit rooms. Sorry, was is that Matt? Yeah. Talking? Okay. Cool. Hey, David. Out of here, Matt. I'll I'll put you in a random room here. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, Matthew McCormick. Okay.
Oh, Christian. No. Oh, well. Yeah, I, I think some people have been uh, coming in and out, like connection issues or, or whatever. So uh, if you don't have a partner, um, you can talk in here in the main room. Okay. Sorry about that. I just saw the. I just caught up on the chat there. No problem. I had this problem before. Um, I could put my students into breakout rooms, but I, for some reason on my account, it doesn't let me go into a breakout room. Oh. I think I'm going to try the. I'm going to. I've tried it before where the students create their own quizzes. I'm going to try that. Cool. Cool. And uh, I'm going to try the template that you provided as well. It's pretty cool. Cool. All right, I'm gonna close up these rooms in a second here. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. We're starting to fill up again here. All right, so um, you know, I I, I feel for your, all all of you. You you have. You're, you experience this a lot, I'm sure, where uh, you, you think things are going okay, or maybe you don't know if things are going okay. That, I'm there right now, so how, how, how are things going now? I, wanna, I don't have any faces. I'm, I'm just imagining smiling faces, you know, people going like this, and, you know. So, um, yeah, l l share out if you, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, Gloria has her baby. Oh, you just made, like, my week. That is adorable. It has been so great seeing Gloria's baby in the breakout group because she's been in my partner. <laughs> it also brightened my day, Mr. Revis, as well. Babies yeah. are so cute. Yes. I Even agree. cuter when they're not ours. Yes, because then, you know, when they're dirty. You're sad here, mommy. Out. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That, that is awesome. That was That's worth the price of admission right there. But, uh, yeah, well, share how, how are you feeling? Um, have you gotten a you know, some aha moment or something you're like, oh yeah, I really want to try this one thing. If I could have like one or two people share out just to kind of test the water here, see how things are going. I see a, is that a, is that a beagle? <laughs> Ms. Payne or yeah. All right. Uh, Darcy said super stoked to do the, the goal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. One more person. You can feel free to unmute if you want, or you know, throw it in the chat. David, I think the flippity is really cool. Um, it's uh, you know another kind of dimension in in gamifying the learning, which the students love. You know, so yeah, that looks really really cool. So hopefully, cool. I'll be able to use that. Awesome, awesome, great. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Uh, John said, "Flippity is really cool to customize something, sort of fun." Yeah, yeah. All right. I did the uh, the, the scavenger hunt in Flippity before we went on break, and that worked really well. Um, you know, the only problem with Google Forms is that if you have something like that, and they can look at the find the answers, uh -huh. but with Flippity they can't, and then unless they get it right, they can't move along. And the uh -huh. um, the, my, the students actually really enjoyed it because I was very obscure. It was like a review for my AP psychology kids. Grand, a little bit better students, but it was it was a review for them, and they had to like really think hard. And 
um, they said they actually enjoyed it because it made them get it correct, exact right. So, yeah, Flippity nice. is a good, good one. Awesome, awesome. Good to hear. I'm really, really excited about Flippity. I teach Prevoke and finding something that is. Sorry, they're doing construction near my house, so it sounds like they're just demolishing a house. Um, anyway, so it, I'm excited because my students do visuals with words, and I just watching that, um, I'm really, really excited to try it. Cool. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I had uh, a question on Flippity. I don't know if um, you read it earlier. It's like, you know how when we do Edpuzzle, we're able to track their progress? Mm -hmm. And also if we do Quizlet, we're able to see if they participated. Is there a way in Flippity to, to look at that? Like if they actually did it and participated? Because it's um, in the report, basically. Yeah, so uh, probably uh, the quick answer is no, but so <laughs> that's not really quick, I guess. But uh, no, there isn't. But um, if you have them create it from scratch, so make the the spreadsheet. So give them the template for the spreadsheet and have them fill out the spreadsheet. You can have them submit the spreadsheet, and then you you can see what they did. Or you know, now as far as how much time they spent uh, on the uh, on the cards and on the games, uh, you, you can't really see that. But um, yeah, that's it. Um, and somebody in the, in the chat mentioned, uh, oh yeah, Stephanie mentioned uh, 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 quality Shakespeare. Yeah, so it's it's quality. It, it, the 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 cool thing is that they're stage productions, which is, I, I think is is even cooler to be able to watch a stage production, not a something that was made for film. You know, so yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's an Oscar Mayer wiener. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Is his name Oscar? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <They're> gonna... <laughs> no, his name is Hebrew National. Come on. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very cool. All right. So um, one more blade to go. So we, we went over um, uh, uh, collaboration, demonstration, and then just now practice. So the last one we're going to look at is coaching, All right? Coaching and facilitating. Uh, two things we do a, a, a lot of in our uh, um, in our profession here, right? And so, um, I don't know if, if any of you have watched Cobra Kai, right? And uh, it's just a silly show, but I love that. Johnny Lawrence makes connections with uh, his students when he, or he has the most success when he makes a personal connection with the students, right? Um, it, sure, they commit crimes and all that, but still, you know, like it, it, the connections there. Let's let's just leave it at that, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so so according to to these uh, folks who wrote this book, coaching and facilitating are the primary ways that teachers can support students, and so. Let's give a look at this, all right? So <clears throat> one of the highest uh, yielding um, um, uh, uh, strategies for student learning, for measuring student learning is using student response cards. So this is in, in, in a physical classroom and student response cards are simply like little cards that students can write like A, B or C and then you ask the question and then they quickly go A, quickly be, go see, you know, like, you know, that, that sort of thing. And so that's high yielding, right? How cool that our, our main platform for uh, delivering um, content has it built in. And so, you know, I don't know if you've felt discouraged, you know, that you're like, well, all I can do is do these, uh, these embedded quizzes and things like that. Uh, well, it, it's actually a high yielding strategy, right? And so um, included some tutorials in case you haven't um, used the Q&A feature or the poll feature in um, uh, Google Meet. So that's there for you. Um, also a, um, a tutorial on how to create a quiz in Google Forms, which again, it's, it's a virtual version of um, student response cards. Um, another really powerful one is Poll Everywhere, which isn't free, 
Um, uh, but there is a free version. The free version, I think, has the thing that you would use. It's an anonymous quiz. And I think that anonymity is part of what it can be really powerful. Um, yeah, and just keeping an eye on, on the chat here. Uh, the PowerPoint is available uh, in the document that uh, I had you make a copy of uh, at the at the end of the uh, document. I think it's like page nine or something. Um, but at the end of the document, before the references, there's a link to uh, the presentation. Um, and if not, I'll I'll put it in the in the chat um, just, um, right at the end here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and and then uh, also included a um, tutorial for using QuizBot, which is this new feature that is available to our district. Um, that uh, you know, I think is really really cool here, and it's a virtual version of student response cards. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, with that, we've come to the sort of the, the end of what we have. I figured there might be a couple of questions here and there, or you might be um, interested in testing out some of these things. So, I wanted to leave some like about ten minutes. So, we actually have a little more than that, about about twenty minutes. So, it, I'll stick around for that entire time. If you want to play around with any of these things and get stuck, and you want to ask a question, you know we can we can definitely uh, do that. So I'll I'll, I'll stick around. But uh, um, f a few uh, housekeeping things to take care of uh, here. One, um, uh, just a you know this, this good practice of ending class with a launch, a word of encouragement. Um, you know I don't know if uh, um, Winston Churchill has actually said this or not, but he, uh, you know, he's kind of credited for saying a lot of things that there's no evidence he he said. But you know, uh, anyway, I, I like the quote, right? The never let a crisis go to waste. We are in a crisis. Um, hopefully, we can learn a lot from this. Maybe take some things that sort of forced our hand now, um, and 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 take it back when things get back to normal, right? Um, so with that, I will um, exit this. I'm going to give you the uh, here's the uh, the link. Get paid, right? So um, so I'm going to put that in in the chat. If you have any questions, I'm going to stick around. Uh, I think we're scheduled till five fifteen. Um, you know, so if you have any questions, you want to play around with any of your things. Go ahead and play around, and I'll, I'll be here to answer any questions. If you have questions now, we can definitely talk. I'll also put a link to this presentation in the chat so that we can, if you need it, it's there for you. And thank you so much. I had fun, and I am uh, in in my head. You did too. I, I hope you did for reals. But so, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, Lindsay. Oh, I miss you too, Lindsay. I had a question. I have to say thank you so much. This was a great presentation. Oh, thanks. Uh, 
I'm wondering if you could go over the jigsaw. I got a little confused with the jigsaw where you were doing all the color coding stuff. Uh huh. Okay. So. Yeah, I can, I can. I can. Okay, go ahead. Go through it again. Yeah. Um. I think my. Uh, let me just stop the recording really.